Zoom. Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Beans Recording. And what you just saw were a bunch of really, really obvious sort of stylistic trademarks that some of the most popular synth YouTubers have that if you were to do them yourself, would probably look like you were copying them. And that would be unoriginal and weird. And I don't know why you would do that. These little stylistic things are really important in making uh, a name for yourself, either through video or music. And uh, we all sort of strive to find our own voice and do things that are original to us to express ourselves. This video is about sort of the difference between inspiration and plagiarism. I recently went through a bout of really hard self-reflection about the differences between these two things because something that happened to me, and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna find a way to talk about it that was constructive, but I think I have. So let's go ahead and talk about the differences in my mind between inspiration and plagiarism and what we can do for ourselves as creators to make sure that we're not just ripping somebody off. Let's just take a hard definition of inspiration from the, uh, the dictionary here. Uh, it has three things. First one is a divine influence or action on a person believed to qualify him or her to receive and communicate sacred revelation. Now, this is obviously a pretty outdated idea, but we all have sort of this happen to us now and then as creatives. We have an idea out of the blue and we'll be compelled to act on it. Arguably, nothing comes out of the blue. We don't live in a creative or cultural vacuum. All things that we think and feel are a synthesis or, or sort of combination of things that we've experienced before. So it's a cute idea, but it's not really real, real. But we still sort of cling to it as the idea of inspiration. We all want it. It's this magical thing. Great. Let's just go with that. So plagiarism is the uh, the practice of taking somebody else's work and ideas and passing them off as one's own. You see something, you're like, I want to have done that. And then you recreate it and pretend that you made it up and you don't give credit, you don't even acknowledge that it existed before, you just steal it for your own. And a lot of people do this for personal gain. Uh, they don't have their own ideas or their ideas aren't as good as somebody else's. They see something that's successful and they want to make it their own and they don't want to acknowledge that it ever happened before because that would cheapen the, the power that it gives to them. My creative philosophy through my whole life has generally been, if somebody is doing it well, then I don't need to do it because not only is it already being done well, I'll be stepping on their toes. And if I have a respect for the person, I want them to have that thing that they have worked hard to develop for themselves. So some concrete examples are like Ableton tutorials or DAW tutorials on how to make genres. There are a bunch of really, really talented people who are committed to doing this and they're doing a really, really good job of it. Synth reviews or synth news. I feel like Bo Beats and some other people really have this handled. I don't need to do it. You can go watch them do it. Um, there's a whole bunch of things like this where I'll think about doing the thing and then I'll realize that somebody else is doing it. I don't want to encroach on that territory for, for them and also for me because I don't want to just do what somebody else is already doing. That's a personal thing. So while I was going through my thought process with this whole event, I searched around for what other people talk about when they talk about the differences between inspiration and plagiarism. Authors, photographers, other musicians. Let's go through what some other people have said about plagiarism and inspiration. So this comes from artistsense.wordpress.com and they have a whole article about this. I'll link to it in the description. They say they can remember a case where somebody else had copied their content and they were asked if they had copied the other person when in fact, they they had been copied. Um, so they then had to sort of like prove that they were the originator of the idea. And they say, uh, they can tell you it didn't feel great. And I can identify with that quite a bit. Having to prove to somebody that you were the originator of an idea that somebody else copied and put in front of other people in such a way that they believe they were the originator of the idea. It's a lot of mental work that you don't really want to do. You already went through the heavy lifting of creating an idea. That's You don't want to do that. They also present this list of questions about the creative process that I guess they're asking themselves or you can ask yourself as you're going through creating something that's maybe similar to somebody else. And we're going to go through those real quick. Are we always aware when, what, and whom we are copying? I don't think we are. 
Sometimes I will have an idea for a song that I'll fully develop on the way to work, like singing it in my head, I'll make the whole thing. And then like halfway through the day, I'll realize it's somebody else's song <laughs> and I've just completely ripped it off. If my mind hadn't pointed that out, I probably would have made the whole song and then it would have been up to somebody else to tell me that, uh, no, hey, you actually, this is the exactly the same as this song. Are creative thoughts even that unique and can't they happen in different places or brains at the same time? Again, our personalities, our, our very way of thinking about reality is a pastiche of things that we experience, uh, the cultural sort of crystal that we all uh, inhabit. And I do not believe that our thoughts are necessarily that unique. Um, I believe that it's very possible for two people to have a creative idea at the same time uh, that are unrelated to each other. Does copying stem from genuine admiration? Um, yes, I think in some cases it does. You can be so inspired by someone that you want to do it like that. And you generally have a, a, a heartfelt admiration for the person and you want them to know how much you feel about them. So you do the thing, generally you share it with them and you're like, I love this so much. I wanted to do something like it. Here's my take on it. Or is the fear that your own work is not good enough? And this goes back to what we said earlier about um, sometimes you, you work on something and you realize you're not getting the success you want, so you copy somebody else. And I don't think that's a healthy way to be creative. Is there maybe even a bit of envy involved? Um, I can't really speak to that, I think, on, so on a case-by-case -case basis. Is it just the path of least resistance? Is this the easiest way for you to get attention as a creative or as, as whatever your field is? Is this just something that will get you the clicks and the likes and the eyes that you're looking for? And uh, if that's the case, then it's probably pretty shitty that you're doing it that way. Is it a way to deal with a creative block? Now, I think that's legit. If you are struggling creatively and you see something that you're incredibly inspired by and you, you want to copy it, then it can not only teach you a new thing, a new technique, but it can also get you out of that thing to use the things that you learn making that thing in something of your own. I do this with uh, computer graphics all the time. I copy things that I see. Or with music, uh, you'll hear a technique and you'll want to make something like it. Instead of passing it off on your own though, you should take what you've learned from that and fold it into your next project so that you can synthesize something unique from it as opposed to just leaning on a copy of it. And then finally, or is it really not caring and being quite okay with ripping other people off as long as we don't get caught? And uh, that's a question you have to ask yourself. Um, some people don't care if they get caught. They're still gonna do it as I learned from my situation, which I'll get to in a bit. The next series of questions and answers comes from creativeblock.com. Um, when does inspiration turn into plagiarism? They have a list of things with questions and answers from different people in different fields. Some of these things I think are very applicable to my situation and possibly yours. So let's go through them real quick. When does inspiration turn plagiarism? Uh, when the source is uncredited. Okay, so <laughs> if you're gonna make something that looks exactly like somebody else, at least give them credit for it. You didn't come up with the idea. like. Give them credit. It's not a big thing. It's not a big deal. You'll look better in the end if somebody like realizes that you're like inspired by this person and you gave them credit. Just, just do it. Number three says, when bespoke photography is stolen. Th this website is talking mostly about code and websites and stuff like that, but I think this applies to my situation and other things too. So they say, it's virtually impossible to create entirely original designs. Almost everything we do has been informed by others' work and existing conventions. In fact, users rely on conventions to make sense of our world. Imagine a web without conventions. It'd be extremely difficult to use. But there are certain design elements or combination of elements that have a purpose specifically for the website on which they belong. And to reuse them elsewhere starts to cross into murky waters of plagiarism. So take that very specific example and blow it up to a technique of music or a technique of video making or a technique of speech writing. And then realize that <laughs> if you take this thing verbatim from somebody else and stick it into your thing, that's plagiarism. It's not inspiration anymore, it's just straight up plagiarism. And it's very obvious that you've done that, that you've taken that thing and repurposed it into something that it doesn't fit as well into as it did in the original. Number five, if there's no improvement to the original, and this is subjective. I'm gonna say that in my personal situation, I don't believe there was any improvement on my original content when this person copied my thing. It's kind of bitchy to say, but it's where I am in this whole thing. But uh, they quote say, if there's an element of functionality that's particularly standout, look to improve upon it. This is fine. You're taking an idea and running with it. If, however, you pilfer the idea and reproduce it wholesale, you're on very shaky ground. 
quote, my rule of thumb is as follows. If you're taking somebody else's work and carbon copying it for financial or reputational gain, you're plagiarizing. And that applies directly to my situation and possibly other situations you've dealt with. It also applies to some of the examples I'll go over in, the, uh, in a little bit here. Finally, when a blurred line is crossed, and this is funny because it has two meanings we'll get to. There's no definitive line when it comes to plagiarism. This says, the lines are blurred and unfortunately that's the reason why so many people get away with it. And that's exactly what's happened to me. And the blurred lines thing is funny because Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams were uh, famously successfully sued for plagiarizing Marvin's gay song, got to give it up for uh, their single blurred lines. Um, so yeah, blurred lines, don't do it. So finally, we're gonna get to the YouTube stuff. Um, there's a really, really fantastic video on plagiarism by H Bomber Guy. It, it offers three examples of YouTubers basically completely lifting scripts and ideas from uh, people, including H Bomber Guy himself for a Bloodborne essay that he did. Uh, it makes a lot of really, really good points, especially the second and third examples. And I urge you to go watch it because it really nails down the feeling of being stolen from, from your ideas by somebody just so that they can you know, make themselves look good. So that finally brings us after a long and twisted road to my situation. In case you don't know, this channel was built on the backs of my OP1 videos. That's why most people are here. That's why my subscriber count is what it is. And these videos featured me with the Teenage Engineering OP1 on a table that looked very similar to this, making a song and putting captions on it, describing the process and also sort of talking about my life and stuff like that. And it was it was pretty fun for a while. I eventually felt a little pigeonholed by that content because I felt like that's what everybody wanted to see all the time. And I didn't want to make it all the time. So I've kind of moved away from that a bit. But the fact remains, that's what people were here for. It's a thing that I feel like I kind of developed for myself. And my love-hate relationship with the OP1 videos is a very personal thing. So enter Yuri Wong. Yuri Wong came to my attention through a video he made that looked a lot like mine. I didn't really think much of it. Uh, it was getting posted everywhere. It showed up on a lot of different subreddits in different forms, which I thought was a little weird. Felt like there was a lot of promotion behind it, but it features the OP1 making a song with funny captions on a light pine table. And I was like, okay, that's fine. It's a one-off thing but it wasn't, it kept going. He kept making them and they got more and more like mine. And there was a point at which he actually said recording to red in his video. And none of his videos have any like credit to me. None of the videos mention me at all. He, he offers no inspiration link in his video descriptions. And that, that really started to bother me. But the thing that really bothered me about this was the fact that it seemed Yuri's entire existence was not necessarily like to make music, but to make viral videos. And in my mind, it seemed like he decided to use my content, the design that I had come up with to create content that put eyes on him and his video business. If you click through to through his Twitter to his website, he has a whole section about making viral and branded content. And that's exactly what he's treating these OP1 videos like, is viral and branded content. He's using SEO to get them promoted. He's posting them all over Reddit. It just feels really scuzzy. And I don't mind if somebody wants to feel inspired by stuff that I've done and do it and love it, but I don't get the impression that's what Yuri's doing. I'm heavily under the impression based on uh, his website and some other things that I've looked into that Yuri is doing this because it boosts eyes onto him, it increases his SEO, all those really weird scuzzy things that like people who care about numbers do. At this point, I'm just sort of trying to write the whole thing off. There's nothing I can do about it. You can't copyright a style, right? But it does hurt. It does feel really weird when somebody takes something that was your baby, a baby that you had a very tumultuous relationship with, and like just guts it <laughs> and then puts it on display as if it's their own. Their comment sections in his videos are full of people who have no idea that what he's doing is is derivative. Um, and in my mind, it's plagiarism. And just for the record, I would never, ever, ever sample Pickle Rick. I think that's disgusting. It's the worst part of Rick and Morty. So is Yuri Wong plagiarizing me or is it inspiration? I think that it's plagiarism based on 
all the things I've talked about and the ecosystem surrounding him and his videos. You can make up your own mind. Please don't go dogpile him or anything like that. Like, this is just sort of an examination of what somebody might go through mentally to get to the point where I have with this whole thing. If you are a creative and you're inspired by somebody's idea, that's fantastic. We all do that. Follow it through, make something like what you are inspired by, fold it into your next project, reach out to the creator that you're inspired by and tell them how much you're inspired by them. That's fantastic. But don't take somebody's work, repackage it and present it as your own without giving credit. That's gross. And there's enough gross things in the world where we don't need more gross things like that. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. Thanks for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.